As SpaceX announced its ambitious plans for the next generation Starship, the world was on the edge of its seat, eagerly awaiting the deployment of Block 2 hardware. But as we all know, rocketry is an unforgiving science. Every breakthrough comes with immense challenges, and even the smallest miscalculation can lead to catastrophe. We've already seen that firsthand with two consecutive explosions in Flight 7 and Flight 8, raising the big question, will Flight 9 suffer the same fate? So, how is SpaceX gearing up for this crucial test? What's changing, and what can we expect next? Let's dive into all the details in today's TechMap episode. That reality hit hard when Flight 7's Ship 33 met a fiery end. Shortly after Booster 14's successful catch, Ship 33 suffered a rapid, unscheduled disassembly and re-entered over the Atlantic. SpaceX later confirmed that a fire had ignited in the aft section of the vehicle following stage separation ultimately leading to its failure. Immediately after the flight, the FAA required SpaceX to conduct a mishap investigation into the Starship failure. More than two months later, the federal agency yesterday announced the close of the investigation. The final mishap report cites the probable root cause for the loss of the Starship vehicle was stronger than anticipated vibrations during flight, which led to increased stress on and failure of the hardware in the propulsion system. The incident caused no public injuries except for a confirmed report of minor vehicle damage in the Turks and Caicos. SpaceX identified 11 corrective actions to prevent a reoccurrence of the event, the statement continued. The FAA verified that SpaceX implemented corrective actions prior to Flight 8. Determined to learn from these setbacks, SpaceX made a series of post-flight upgrades ahead of Flight 8. On March 10, 2025, Super Heavy Booster B-15 and Starship S-34 took to the skies. But despite the improvements, Flight 8 met a similar fate. Another anomaly, another lost vehicle. Now, as Flight 9 approaches, the question looms. Will the third time be the charm? There's no definitive answer. But one thing is certain, SpaceX has worked relentlessly to address the major issues that plagued the last two flights. While the company has yet to reveal all the root causes, it's likely that Flight 8 encountered many of the same challenges as Flight 7. This means that the improvements made before Flight 8 can still be applied, refined, and expanded upon. So, let's shift our focus to the two key players in Flight 9, Ship 35, and Booster 14. For Ship 35, two critical factors may have contributed to previous failures, harmonic resonance and the stage separation mechanism. During Flight 8, the cavity above the engine firewall may have experienced excessive harmonic vibrations, leading to a leak. As pressure built up, the venting system may not have been able to release it efficiently allowing leaked propellant to come into contact with engine exhaust gases, potentially igniting fires, much like those observed in Ship 34's vacuum engines. Additionally, rising pressure could have compromised the cooling system, causing engines to overheat and fail. To prevent these issues from recurring, SpaceX will need to refine the upgrades introduced after Flight 7. First, the venting system must be improved to enhance pressure release capabilities. The fire suppression and nitrogen filtration systems also require reinforcement to swiftly extinguish any flames. Finally, additional protection for the engine cooling system is crucial to maintaining performance throughout the flight. Many experts speculate that feedline problems become more pronounced as fuel levels drop. Since SpaceX's pre-flight tests have traditionally been conducted with a fully-fueled vehicle, this issue may have remained undetected until actual flight conditions. Structural resonance could be amplifying vibrations that damage the vehicle, and the version 2 Starship design may be particularly vulnerable due to recent structural modifications. SpaceX is taking these concerns seriously, even announcing new engineering hires to tackle the problem head-on. Another critical issue with the current system lies in how it integrates with SpaceX's long-term goal of full reusability. 
As it stands, the hot staging ring is jettisoned mid-flight to optimize booster maneuverability. But this contradicts the fundamental principle of Starship's design. Every component should be reusable. Finding a way to retain the ring without sacrificing performance will be essential for future iterations of the vehicle. Also, recent concerns suggest that the separation mechanism, particularly the hot staging ring, may be exerting excessive back pressure and shock on the upper stage. Moreover, as SpaceX scales up Starship's design, these challenges only become more pronounced. Larger variants like Starship version 2 and version 3 demand even more precise staging solutions. The problems seen during Flight 8's hot staging event underscore the urgency of these refinements, making it likely that SpaceX will implement upgrades sooner rather than later. The proposed redesign isn't just theoretical, it takes direct inspiration from historical precedents, notably the Soviet-era N-1 rocket. SpaceX has already hinted at these changes through renderings of different Starship versions released in April, which show noticeable differences in the hot staging system of Starship version 3. Given recent failures, adopting a more robust system ahead of schedule seems increasingly plausible. One major upgrade involves extending the hot staging ring to provide better shielding for sensitive components like the grid fins. This improvement, combined with the repositioning of the grid fins lower on the booster, will reduce their exposure to the intense heat and pressure of stage separation. Additionally, SpaceX plans to expand the vent openings to enhance heat and pressure dissipation. The current design already directs exhaust away from the booster, but with the introduction of more powerful Raptor 3 engines, the forces at play will be even greater. Enlarging or reshaping these vents, possibly incorporating angled or curved geometries, could optimize exhaust flow without significantly increasing weight. Computational fluid dynamics CFD, simulations, similar to those NASA has used to study Starship aerodynamics, could further refine this approach, ensuring the booster remains well protected during separation. Beyond just improving performance, these enhancements streamline manufacturing and integration. The refined hot staging ring is expected to be simpler in design, reducing production complexity and making refurbishment between flights more efficient. This aligns with SpaceX's overarching strategy, continuous iteration, to push Starship toward rapid turnaround and full reusability. However, adapting this system to larger vehicles with increased thrust and payload capacity demands even more precise adjustments. One of the major benefits of the updated hot staging system is reduced weight. To achieve this, SpaceX could optimize the materials used in its construction. Currently, the hot staging ring features a protective dome for the booster. By switching to lightweight, high-tech materials, such as heat-resistant alloys or ceramic composites, SpaceX could maintain or even improve thermal protection while significantly reducing mass. Starship already relies on stainless steel for its durability and heat resistance. By strategically thinning certain areas or reinforcing critical sections with advanced 3D printing techniques, the vehicle could retain its strength without unnecessary added weight. A more integrated design also presents several advantages. In the Block 1 boosters, the hot staging ring is a separate component, but for version 2 and version 3, SpaceX aims to incorporate it directly into the booster itself. This approach eliminates unnecessary parts, further reducing mass. By making the booster's upper dome function as a heat shield, potentially integrating internal baffles or cooling channels that utilize residual propellant, the need for a separate staging ring could be minimized. This not only simplifies the structure, but also enhances its ability to handle the increased loads expected in larger Starship variants. With this revamped design, Starship's stage separation process will become more efficient, ensuring that both the booster and the ship remain in optimal condition for their respective missions. A seemingly minor modification, but one with significant consequences, another testament to SpaceX's commitment to continuous innovation. 
fine-tuning the separation timing could further enhance hot staging performance. Adjusting the exact moment the upper stage engines ignite, potentially by mere milliseconds based on real-time sensor data, could provide a smoother push-off from the booster without overloading its structural frame. This refinement would rely on smarter software and precise control algorithms rather than additional hardware, demonstrating how SpaceX's iterative approach extends beyond just physical upgrades to intelligent system optimizations as well. With these improvements, SpaceX aims to make hot staging not just a functional necessity, but a seamless, reusable component of Starship's architecture. The coming flights will be a crucial testbed for these modifications, and if successful, they could mark a major step toward the long-term vision of making Starship the backbone of interplanetary travel. Additionally, the hot staging clamps must undergo meticulous inspections to prevent scrubs like the one experienced during Flight 8. Even minor malfunctions in this system could lead to costly delays, making it crucial to identify and address potential weaknesses ahead of time. Furthermore, the booster's engines require adjustments to mitigate damage, particularly during the reignition phase following separation. While these issues have not yet directly affected booster landing attempts, they remain critical hurdles that SpaceX must overcome as it continues refining its recovery process. Flight 9 will also bring SpaceX one step closer to achieving full reusability by launching Booster 14 for a second time, potentially making it the first Starship booster to fly twice. Another major milestone to watch is engine reuse. SpaceX has already made significant strides in this area, notably by reusing engine 314 on Flight 7, the first flight of B-14. This engine had previously flown on B-12 during Flight 5. If engine 314 is used again on Flight 9, it will have completed three launches, an incredible achievement in rocket reusability. Unfortunately, it appears that B-14 will not be recovered using the Mechazilla arms. Instead, the booster will likely be landed in the ocean, making Flight 9 its final mission. While this may be disappointing, especially given B-14's legacy as one of the first Starship boosters to land and undergo refurbishment, this decision could be a strategic one. SpaceX has not officially stated why the booster will not be caught, but there are a few possible explanations. First, the launch tower's catching system may be undergoing upgrades, making it unavailable for Flight 9. Second, and perhaps more likely, SpaceX may be prioritizing the ship's performance on this mission. Ensuring that the upper stage completes its full flight profile successfully could be the primary focus. By opting to land the booster in the ocean, SpaceX can simplify operations and allocate more resources to validating the ship's re-entry and landing procedures.